Hi, I'm David. I'm here to demonstrate the use of a hydronic manometer to measure the flow across a, a circuit setter. We're here in uh, a heat pump water heating mechanical room. So this, this is the room where we have tanks and heat pumps and pumps that are used to generate hot water for this apartment building and distribute it to all the apartments. And we are some work was done to install a new balancing valve here to allow us to optimize the performance of the system. So today we're gonna, we're gonna set it with the manometer. So what we have here is the TSI hydronic manometer uh, from the Smart Buildings Center. Uh, we're gonna use it today to measure the flow or the pressure differential across a circuit setter balancing valve to determine the flow and use, it, use the manometer to set the flow as we want it to be. All right, so we have the manometer just hanging from the pipe here so we can read the readout and the attached um, lines that get installed in the ports on the balancing valve. So these are just needles with small holes in there to measure the pressure. Uh, I'm gonna now install the needles into the ports on the balancing valve to measure the pressure differential. And uh, one thing would be to just not knowing where these things have been, uh, clean the needles, because this will be in contact with potable water, just with some isopropyl alcohol um, before putting them into the ports. So the device, once we plug this into the port, water will flow into the tube, into the manometer, and it is in what's called measure mode right now meaning water will not pass through the device. But just to be sure, recommend just closing these isolation valves on the manometer, just so water doesn't spray everywhere potentially. So first we're gonna install the needle on the high pressure side with the, the red hose goes into the high pressure side. It actually doesn't matter, but uh, just for continuity with the readings. So we're gonna insert it in. It takes a little bit of force to break the seal on the Bow on the port and once it's all the way in. So now that needle is immersed in the water in the pipe on the high pressure side of the balancing valve. So the next thing we're going to do is to purge air in the lines of the manometer so that air bubbles in the lines don't influence. So I'm going to power up the manometer at this point. Um, I'm going to escape. The uh, first thing it wants to do is zero the gauge, but we're going to re-zero it after we get, um, uh, get it all ready to, uh, for the final measurement. So this is uh, the meter is on. It starts up after it's zeroed. The pressure um, will see the readout, which is feet of water and differential pressure between the high and the low. Um, but uh, first thing we need to do is purge air of the lines. So we're going to switch this into bypass. With And now that will allow water to flow through the meter in the red pipe and into the blue. And this is why you want to have the blue end of the meter in a bucket. For Oh, I'm sorry, I need to do this. Open the valves. <laughs> There we go. Now we have water flowing through, or we will any minute now. So you can see the water flowing down. So water's flowing up from the high side to the low side right now. Close off the, the low side. Clean it. Some alcohol again. And insert it on the high the low side of the port. So again, push it in. Okay. With it in place, we can switch it back to um, we can open the shutoff valve and put it back into measure.
So now what the manometer is reading is the pressure differential between the high and the low side, basically between these two points. It's quite low right now, um, indicating there is not much flow through the circuit setter. Um, and we can change the circuit setter valve position to know to see that pressure differential change and we can use those pressure differential measurement to know what the flow is. Okay, so we have the manometer installed in the valve. Uh, we are reading differential pressure here across the two points and this being a calibrated balancing valve, the differential pressure can be translated to flow if you have either a chart that has that relationship on it, like this, or um, an app that allows you to enter the readings that you get and get the resulting flow. So the first thing we do is we set it to the valve size. Um, the setting, which right now is set to zero, and now we enter the head loss, the pressure that we measure on the valve, on the manometer, which is 0 0.55. And that tells us the flow. So right now, 19 GPM is what it is estimating as the flow through there. Um, now, one of the challenges with these valves is if there's very low pressure differential across them, they don't really give you accurate readings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the valve a bit and watch the pressure change. And we're gonna use that number as the reading for setting it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the valve um, to about halfway between its two set points. And we can see the pressure differential change. I'm gonna move over here. So there's a knob here and I'm gonna Turn it to halfway. So we can see the pressure is going up, the differential across the two points. If we further close the valve, we're going to see it go even higher. Now we're reading roughly 15 feet of head to 16, 17 bouncing around a little bit. And I'm gonna put that number into the gate, to the app. So this now we're at a setting of 50. And the head loss is, we're gonna call it 24.5. And that gives us a flow of 10.5 GPM. So at this point, we've determined the flow uh, through the valve based on the hydronic manometer's reading using that reading and the app. And we can see that from our last measurement, the pressure has gone down and therefore the flow has gone down. So we can update our reading by changing the input of the pressure, let's call it 12.5 GPM or feet of, and now the flow is reduced to 7.5 GPM. And the flow through this pipe is variable. Uh, and so what's the dynamics of the system have changed and therefore uh, the flow has changed. But one thing that I can point out is that at a given setting of the valve, there is a characteristic value called the CV value, which the app will tell you. That CV value is static for, once, for the setting of the valve. And this manometer actually has the feature of setting that CP, CV value and having the flow being read right on the display here. So I don't have to continuously put it into the app. So I'm gonna go to menu, flow setup, select CV KV factor. It allows you to have multiple factors set. We're gonna use number one. Um, it's a CV is the type. The entered value is 3.2. That's what comes from the valve manufacturer. And in this case, the app. 
the CV value for the flow setting of 50. It's already been set. Uh, oops, escape, that's to change it. Um, the name of the CV value, again, you can have multiple ones programmed. The fluid, which is water, and the temperature, which I know is about 118 degrees. So it has inside the device the ability to convert that CV value and these other variables to the flow. So we're going to go back to this. So we see the differential pressure. We're going to switch from pressure, which we're the mode we're in. So pressure is the mode we're in now. We're going to go to flow. And now it's indicating USGPM flow. It also reports the differential pressure and the temperature that we've entered. And if we pull up the app, and so we update it to the pressure, 10.5, enter. 6.9 is what the app says. The meter says 6.8 because it's chain, you know, it's not exactly 10.5 feet. But you get the idea that once you know the CV value, you can program it into the manometer and have the flow readout specifically right on the display. So you don't have to update the app over and over with the flow. So you can see the dynamics of the flow updating and changing. And you can log this value into internal memory. So if you want to trend it for a little while, you can get the flow so you don't have to constantly use the app to update your, your measurement. So right now it's sitting pretty static. Um, depending on how much hot water is being used and the temperatures, it'll change. But um, this is about exactly where we wanted this flow to be sitting. So we'll, we'll kind of commit, call this commission at this point. So I want to show you in the same room here, we have another valve. It's the, actually the exact same valve that we just measured and set. Uh, but in this case, it's not being used for, it's fully open. It's not being used for anything uh, to set the flow. But in a situation where the pump, if it's a constant speed pump without a readout like this that tells us what the flow is or the speed, you could have a dump pump that is just running and use the manometer to measure the flow across that valve to determine um, what, how much flow is, is actually being pushed by the pump when you don't have a readout that's a really nice handy feature of these calibrated circuit setters or balancing valves. Um, it's a, it's a, a flow measurement device and a way to adjust the flow if you have to.